Beer Dairy. Sunday, right? Sunday? Sunday. Um, so I've been asked, how do I make my tea? Well, there you go. Almost splashed back and hit me in the face. What I do is I take a plastic measuring cup, two cup measuring cup, because this holds two cups of water. And I microwave it for three minutes on high, which brings the water exactly to a boil in my microwave. I then, depending on the flavor that I want, I either use Tetley's British Blend, or I use just regular Lipton, you know, tea bags. And with Lipton, though, I snip the, the, the string and tag off, because here's the part, here's the part where all my British friends and all of my tea snob friends are going to flip their lids <clears throat> because I take the tea bags and I drop them in there. I pour the water in and then I put the lid on. And I don't take the bags out until I'm finished drinking the tea. Sometimes that's the next day. I leave it in there for a long time because I like a very, very strong tea. Um, so that's how I do it. Today, since I was thinking about it, I was watching, I was actually watching Dodger's uh, uh, coffee time. Well, she was drinking tea, but her coffee time, where she was talking about how she makes tea, which ironically was the same time that I had been asked how I do it. And she she said that she was putting up um, a towel rack in her bathroom. She had started steeping the tea, and she usually leaves the tea bags in there for three minutes. And then she, you know, takes it out again, because otherwise it starts tasting like swill. But she went to put this, you know, towel rack up in her bathroom, and it was 20 minutes later. And she's like, oh, God, no. Hold on. Sometimes I leave it in there for a day, girl, said. Don't even start me. Which is kind of ironic because, you know, I... I no, it's not. Why, what am I... I'm not sure why I said that. Hmm. It has been surprisingly cold to me. Please note how I said that. It has been surprisingly cold to me. Um, I love the cold. Love it. Love, 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 love. Um... When I was coming back from a uh, mascot gig back east, God, I am so groggy right now. Because um, my tea isn't strong enough. Because I took the bags out after about 15 minutes. Um, anyway, um, I was on my way back from a mascot gig. This is several years ago. And it was winter time. And, uh, I had a connecting flight in, I think, in Denver. And it was a little bitty plane that we were getting on. So small, in fact, that the, it didn't pull up to the gate. Well, not to the jetway. It just folded its little hatch down, and we climbed up the stairs outside. Or they, they rolled a small stair truck up to it, and we walked up that. Um, I had never, aside from being on a Cessna, I had never been on a plane that small. Um, it was like two rows of seats down either side instead of, well, instead of rows of three, there's only two seats down either side. Um, you kind of had to crouch a little bit when you're inside. I was like, wow, this is a small plane. Anyway, there were piles of snow outside because of course it's Colorado and you're up there a bit. Um, and I knew we were not going to be walking down the jetway. We had to go outside to do this. And I was, as usual, wearing shorts and a t-shirt. And um, I, uh, I asked the, the guy at the security gate, and I said, would it be possible for me to go out the door first and get on the plane last, just so that I can walk incredibly slowly to the plane? And she's like, 
honey, do you realize how you're dressed? I said, yes, yes, I do. Actually, that's why I want to do this. She's like, do you know how cold it is out there? I said, uh-huh. I love the cold. I just, I just, I don't get to bask in the cold. I was like, can, can you really bask in cold? I guess you can. But um, she's like, fine, whatever. And so when it came time, she opened the door, and I walked out. I said, thank you so much. She's like, you crazy. I said, well, they're, <laughs> Yeah, and so I just walked, and it wasn't snowing, but there was plenty of snow all around. It was nighttime, so it was windy, very cold, and um, got on the plane last. Oh, it was so wonderful. I loved it. It was great. Mm. Sort of like when I, I drove from Oklahoma City to uh, Bangor, Maine. Well, I think it was actually Bolton, Maine, Colton, Maine. It's right there at the Nova Scotia, Maine border, and... um I was driving a PT Cruiser, and we're driving between blizzards, two blizzards sweeping across New England, and we're driving between them. So I'm, every time I stop to fill up the gas tank, it's like I'm standing there in shorts and a t-shirt, filling up the gas, just perfectly happy, doo -doo. and there's a person at the pump next to me who's completely bundled up, scarf wrapped around their face and stuff, and you know, they're just kind of looking like, what the hell is wrong with you? And like, how's it going? They're like, aren't you cold? I'm like, yes, but I like it. And they're like, where are you from? And I'm like, California. And they go, oh. And I'm like, that doesn't explain it. What? <laughs> Why is that suddenly? Oh, maybe I'm too stoned to realize how cold it is. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, I like the cold. But even lately, I've been like. God, damn, it's chilly around here. <laughs> I'm like wrapping myself up more. Not sure what's going on. Um, maybe I'm getting sick. <gasps> uh, let's see. So, old business. And by old business, I mean stuff that was requested of me last week. Um, oh, one was the tea. Uh, the other is... There's a friend of mine, one of the folks who watches the show, and uh, there's a little fox puppet, and he said, I'll ask me to give him a shout out and to say Marie Giffmas to him. So, there you go, Fox, Marie Giffman. Now, um, there was something else I was going to talk about. There's some, some stuff with some changes coming down with YouTube and the various partnerships and networks. It's going on, but it's still kind of in flux as to exactly what it is and what it means. For the viewers, I don't think much is going to change. I don't think much is going to change. I don't know. We're still not sure. Um, <clears throat> basically, YouTube is still trying to crack down on the you know copyright infringement stuff. And when YouTube first started, it was, you know, it was their job to, when somebody wanted to monetize a video, they go through and they, you know, it goes into review and then you, they go through and they check and they make sure that there's nothing, um, you know, copy, there's no copyrighted music or artwork or game footage or whatever in there. When people started doing more and more, uh, game footage and stuff and the various, um, partnership stuff started coming together and then you had uh things like polaris and maker and rpm and uh, uh and 4g but for the whatever they're i've forgotten the name now um anyway all the various youtube partnerships that came up and the independent you know channels they made uh deals with youtube saying okay we will police our people and we will make sure that their stuff does not contain any copyrighted you know, materials that they don't have permission to use. And <clears throat> the trade-off for that was videos get monetized instantly. Because part of the problem is, is that usually when you monetize a video, um, it, it can take days for it to go through the review process. And videos get most of their views in that first you know, day or two. So to have it not monetized 
mm, you know, can be difficult. Um, oh, I, I, I mentioned this last week, actually, and now I remember because I had to go through and put that little annotation in the video. Anyway, um, yeah, you can leave it in an unlisted state, which is not a private state, but it's it's active, but it's not displayed openly. And then it can be monetized for, or put into review at that point. And then it'll take anywhere from a couple of hours to a couple of days, depending on how busy it is for YouTube. Now, the problem with this is, like, the audiobook stuff that I want to do and everything, gameplay footage, whatever like that, that doesn't really shut up. Okay, you want to go ahead and do your side of it? Because I know you're going to do it. We'll get to you in a minute. Um, the, uh, where was I? Right, take a long time. And, um, you know, if you're doing things that aren't, you know, topical, like news or vlogs, it doesn't matter. You know, I can, I can take, like, redoing my WoW audiobooks and all of the WoW audiobooks and doing Skyrim books and, and audiobooks for ESO and, and whatever else. All that stuff, I can leave it, you know, unlisted for days, if needs be, because there's not anything topical about it. Um, it doesn't matter if it waits a couple of days. Things like the, you know, this vlog. <laughs> if I record Tuesday's vlog, but it doesn't get monetized until Thursday, nah. um, so in all likelihood, until I became a managed partner, uh, these wouldn't be monetized. But, but uh, Skyless pointed out another option, which I am looking into, and that is Patreon. Uh, thing where where my my fans set out like they say like okay I'm gonna pay twenty five cents per video or whatever and that money goes to me you know <laughs> everything and it's like people pay me for my content rather than paying you know for the ads well I mean not like in, in rather than paying by watching ads and whatnot. Um, so I'm definitely looking into that. And I spoke with them briefly today. They said that uh, it should not impact my contract with Maker at all, which would be awesome. Yay! Um, so I'll probably be doing that. And once I make a decision on that and get everything finalized, I'll tell you guys what it is. Then you guys can go and tell them, you know, I'll pay him... You know, five cents for every three videos he puts out. And then I'll get about the same amount of money. <laughs> Actually, I'll probably get more money than I do just from doing it the way I'm doing it now. Anyway, the the changes to YouTube don't take effect until January. So I've definitely got time to get everything set up and put in place and tell everybody about it. So no big deal there. Um, what else? I, oh. Oh, okay. This final piece of business. Now, it was, I guess it was about a week ago, maybe a little bit longer, that I had mentioned that there was another story from Hawaii that I wanted to tell, but it was, I was going to wait until yesterday, basically, um, to tell it, because I wanted the timing to be right. Um... And then I wound up not recording yesterday because it was Saturday. But when I got to Hawaii, now this part, mind you, is um, there's a, a very strong, very strong current of racism to this, to this particular story. So if that bothers you, you may want to turn this off because it's probably going to piss you off as much as it did me. Um... But it's, it's, even though it's not a pleasant story, it's still one that I share with people on occasion just because. <clears throat> anyway, um, if you just want to mute this and catch up with me at the end, I will do this when I'm done. And then you can unmute the thing. So, here we go. When I got to Hawaii... Uh, like I told you, one of the first nights that I was there, a sergeant took me around the you know, around Honolulu and Waikiki and showed me where things were. That's when he showed me where the gay bar was. He said, don't go in there. 
and I memorized the address. And anyway, uh, it was a couple of days after I'd been there for a while, and, and we got to talking about people who had just shipped out, had transferred to other bases and whatnot. And I don't remember this guy's name, fortunately. Um, but it was made very clear to me that this guy, he was one of the other medics in the uh, platoon, hated, hated Asians. Hated them with a passion. And at one point, apparently, was in downtown Waikiki, walking down the street, and a beautiful Asian, a Japanese family walked up to him. I mean, camera, tour map, everything. Walked up to him and asked him where they could find the USS Arizona Memorial. And he screamed at them, it's right where you fucking sunk it. When I heard this, <laughs> I was so glad he was not there. If he had still been stationed there at that point, I would have immediately requested a transfer to get the hell away from that guy. Because that kind of thing... I mean, you want to be racist, that's fine, but this was on the street in the middle of the day in Waikiki to a family. Oh. Mm -mm. No. No. So there's that story. Why would it be topical yesterday? For those of you who don't know your dates, yesterday, yes, yesterday was December 7th, which was the day of the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. Uh, just, oh my God, I'm so glad I never met that guy. I might have been tempted to hit him. And I don't like hitting people much. I mean, <laughs> during sex, it's fine. Wait, that's for Tuesday. Sorry, never mind. So we'll move on. And that's why we call him Tripod. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there we are, just about 17 and a half minutes plus ish. And I will let you guys go. Uh, tomorrow is. Monday. Motivational Monday will be tomorrow. Got to find some motivational stuff. And get ready. Ant and Jazz. Ooh, I may just point you towards Dodgers being, you know, emotionally healthy video that she did. Because, you know, I like Dodger. I, I think she's, she's very, very cool. I can hardly wait to meet her someday. I love her videos. I think she's very funny. She's very engaging. Um... But, you know, most of her videos are very, very good. Her, you know, being emotionally healthy thing that she did, I think, two days ago, really rock solid. And I mean, really good. I, it is my favorite vlog she's ever done to date. And uh, I like her stuff, so that's saying something. Um, yeah, okay. So, 18 and a half minutes now. So, I will let you guys go. I will talk to you tomorrow. And until then, be careless.